Hi, this is Mike Douglas, presenting beadwork for Open Arperio 2021. I'll briefly introduce myself. I'm the architect and lead programmer of beadwork. I've been a member of CalConnect, the Calendar Consortium, since, since the start. I'm the author and joint author of a number of calendar related standards. I've been programming since the mainframe days, and that really does include COBOL and Fortran and other such things. But now it's almost exclusively Java. Um, we've got a brief history of beadwork here. It, um, we all, it all started in 2004 when we started contributing to the um, University of Washington calendar. Uh, we did that for a couple of years and then um, it became clear that we needed to fork beadwork off as a, as a separate um, project that's where it got it, that's when it got its name and we started with version three because one and two were actually the uw calendar versions one and two and that same year we got the uh, Mellon foundation award um 2009 we joined jseg as an incubator project um around then i i started using solar to index um events in, in beadwork mostly so we could do searching um, and uh, around 2013 uh, I almost overnight rewrote the indexing to use elastic search um, same year we, we moved from to github from subversion we've been using subversion from the start we eventually moved to github um, 2017, I guess, is the time we finally got off JBoss 5, which we used for years and years, and then moved on to Wildfly, which is JBoss, it was Wildfly 10 at that point. Um, and I guess the, the big significant change since has been that the front end client now uses Elasticsearch only. There are no database interactions at all. Um, Beadwork is, is standards compliant. Um, it's open source. It's a comprehensive countering and event system. It, it supports all uh, of CalDAV, and uh, but we do tend to focus on public events. We've been a member of CalConnect.org, or I have, um, basically since the very start. First, for the first meeting as a University of Washington attendee, actually, and then mostly as Rensselaer Polytechnic, um, and then more recently as an individual member, and finally as a BCS member, we're at the top there. And these are some of the releases over time, starting with the one in 2006 with the 3.0. Uh, we've got a bit more careful over the numbering as time's gone on. We're still running on three and toying with the idea of going to four. Four was gonna be the big schema change which I still haven't got around to. It may be that the changes I'm making with Wildfly um, are appropriate for a change to, to four. We'll see. And here's a quick feature overview of, of beadwork. Um, as I say, we do a lot of public calendar support. So we've got public web calendars and views. Um, we've got feeds and widgets, event administration, obviously, event submission, which allows um, people outside of the administrators to submit events, which can then be uh, approved by um, administrators. And we have a public events ad registration system. Um, as said, we have full person calendaring available. And um, we've got a CalDAV server, a CardDAV server, a time zone server, and um, various APIs, including REST and SOAP. And hopefully we'll have JMAP for calendars running soon. So public events calendaring. We've got a fully responsive public web client. Um, it can, uh, has a rather nice view on the, uh, on the phone. There's a, a number of different views you can find by going to places like Yale or Duke or, or Maryland. Uh, it's fully customizable to provide different looks. Um, I'm not sure quite where where this 
stands, but it may actually be uh, fully conformant now. Um, Arlen did some work recently on, on the clients, uh, so we asked them to, to improve some features that may not quite have made it back into the, um, into the source. I need to check on that, but pretty much um, fully accessible. Uh, there's a lot of filtering because we um, use a lot of categories and they're available for people who want to try and filter for some particular subscription. Probably most useful for um, websites within an organization like a university is the ability to build your own feeds and widgets using uh, the export subscribe link on the, on the main calendar page. So by just clicking the boxes in the, um, that you're presented with, you can, you can produce yourself a feed, which will then show up either as a URL that you can use, or even as a little JavaScript widget, which you can embed on your, your site. And you do things like display the, the top five, you know, upcoming events. Um, maybe just and then have links back to the main site. Um, as I said we have an administration client it still looks the same after years but um, it works fine. So this is the main um, uh, home page effectively. It's got the links to add and manage events as links for adding and, ma and managing contacts and locations and categories. Um, there's a few tabs at the top there, which will show up for depending upon which features you have enabled. Um, the approval queue is, is a sort of a workflow approach where you can have approvers and, um, and submitters, you can look at later. The pending queue is related to event submission. Um, if you know, students or others can submit events for the calendar, they go on the pending queue and they can be um, picked up by administrators who can then essentially claim them and manipulate them into the right shape and then, then they get published. Um, calendar suites are what we uh, effectively generally regard for largish organizations. A calendar suite uh, is a group that is managing a particular view of, of a calendar, but we also use it for simply partitioning the uh, administration up into different groups. And if you're a super user, you'll things, see things like the user and system tab. Um, submitting an event is just one big page. It has the kind of things you'd expect. Um, the uh, location and contact fields are now searchable. As you start typing, you'll get a, um, a pop-up with, with the uh, result of, of what you're typing. Um, topical areas are not quite like categories. A topical area can have multiple categories associated with it. Topical areas are used for both filtering on output and for tagging on input. Um, we have full support of recurring events. I'm hoping to have um, support for recurrences in different calendar systems. This might be useful if you want to have things that are related to um, religious events or others in different calendar systems. Um, as I said, we have now structured locations so you can put in quite a, a fair amount of information into the um, the location uh, it's structured in the way you might expect you can also add a, a url for um, things like google maps or open map um, you can add a geo uri as well if you want um, This is another feature we have when you, as I said, we have calendar suites, which um, is one or more 
administrative groups that are, are bundled together to effectively manage a view of the um, calendar. You might actually have a, a public view associated with it, or you may not. You may just it may just be a bunch of groups, but on the front view, you'll be able to. to um, you can usually select events submitted by a particular calendar suite. So that might be the uh, physics department, a, a museum, a uh, arts department, or whatever. Suggested events allow one calendar suite to suggest an event to another calendar suite. If it's accepted, it appears in the accepting calendar suite as if they'd submitted it themselves. So when you filter on on the acceptors calendar suite, the, the suggested events will show up. It's useful for things that sort of cross over um, interest areas. You, know, you may have some museum event uh, which will turn up on the museum site, but maybe it also has something specifically interesting for uh, engineers or physicists or mathematicians or whatever. So suggesting that to the to the um, interested parties allows them to to have that turn up to for their own audience. Uh, you can reject the idea as well if you want. You don't. As I said before, there's um, simple workflow. Um, it it is fairly simple, but it covers most cases that need it. Uh, the idea is that your Administrators are sort of divided into two major groups. There's the uh, submitters and the approvers. Um, approvers obviously can submit as well, but uh, a submitter will create an event which will go into a submission queue or the approval queue. It doesn't. It doesn't appear in the in the public calendar. Um, an approver can take a look at these events and decide whether they're, they're okay or they can get back to the submitter and ask them to correct it. Once they're, they're, they believe it's okay, they can approve it and it gets published. Uh, so for those places that want to keep an eye on what people are doing, they have the possibility. Oh, we should go back. As I said, we have personal calendaring as well. We've, it's fully functional. Some places are using it. The original intent was that personal calendaring and public events would be more um, more related, but there's a few places that run both. There are some places run personal calendaring. There's a lot of places that run public, but a uh, few that run both. So we did have this idea of subscribing to public events from the personal calendar and um, referring to single events from the public from the personal calendar. But uh, that's a little used feature. Um, but everything you might expect to find in, in personal calendaring, personal and group calendaring is available in beadwork. Uh, we have scheduling, we have, um, and we do have a fairly old um, web client. It could certainly do with a, a refresh, but uh, we've not had anybody who's had the time to do so yet. Um, it's much as you would expect. There's a, a bunch of, of available calendars on, on the, uh, the left and, and a display of whatever is in your calendar on the, on the right. There are various tabs to switch the views. Polls is a feature we implement, which is vPoll. It's still a draft standard, but it's, um, it, it's uh, sort of like a doodle idea. It's functional, but um, not very much used. Um, and we have CalDAV support. That's what they have on the phone, iPhone. Um, we were one of the first to have CalDAV. Um, we have CalDAV sharing implemented. In fact, Beadwork was the second calendar system to implement uh, CalDAV sharing after Apple. Um, and you can get notifications um, of events being added to shared calendars. Um, so here's a quick look at the calendar sharing tab. When you try and share a calendar with somebody, you say who you want to share it with, you've got a name for it, and you can give somebody either write access or they just get read access. 
So what's underneath it all at the moment? Um, I say Java 11 is required. Um, it's all there in GitHub. It's a bunch of uh, beadwork projects. Um, the documentation is moving to GitHub pages. Uh, as I say, it runs on Wildfly. We use Elasticsearch extensively and, um, and it's all built using Maven and a bunch of plugins that I wrote to, to uh, help that. So recent activities, um, there've been a lot of performance improvements. There almost always are performance improvements at each release, but uh, there've been some significant ones lately. Um, last year, I um, finished off the changes that allowed the public clients to only use Elasticsearch. There's no database interactions. Um, some of our biggest problems had been um, running out of database connections or database co connections hanging or whatever. Um, there's none of that now going on. Uh, we get significantly shorter response times, uh, even on a fairly small machine, the bulk of the um, the responses are, are under 100 milliseconds. Uh, I have seen systems where you can get it down at 25 milliseconds or so um, response. Uh, and as I say, it's much more stable. Um, and recently I carried out a huge refactoring of the, um, of the system. It's been something I've been intending to do for a while. The idea is to split all the read-only code from the read-write code. Uh, I did that for the client, um, and the idea is to be able to deploy a read-only application with the smallest amount of code in there. For, um, and I also rearranged the, um, the deployment process, so I'm making use of Wildfly modules. Um, anybody who's familiar with Wildfly will know that they have a, a certain amount of shared um, classes inside a module system. It's not the Java module system, it's, it's rather different. Um, that I hope will lead to faster startup and better memories and smaller year files because the year files essentially have nothing in them. It's all deployed into the modules. Um, I'm hoping to continue that refactoring right down through the um, the calendar engine itself, but that's a little more complicated. I did have a try at that and it um, it and ran into some problems. I've made a first step in that by splitting out some common code that uh, doesn't need to be split. Uh, the next step, not this coming release, I'm going to release, hoping to release soon, maybe even by the time you see this. The next steps though are to try and package the, the front end clients as a single jar runnable service. Wildfly has this facility which allows you to create a runnable jar, which is the whole thing packaged up inside a single jar. It makes it easier to deploy. And uh, one of the things I hope to do is use that to allow order scaling of the, um, of the public clients in, in AWS. It allows for a much cheaper um, deployment because you can run on a very small machine, say overnight, and then just scale it up a bit during the day when things start to get a bit busy. Um, most front end services allow you to, to build in auto scaling of that kind. And um, there is commercial support. It's uh, BCS, which is, um, and you can contact me. I generally do things like initial setup and configuration. Um, I will do upgrades and if asked, we can do feature development. Um, we do have a hosting service, but uh, most people prefer to run it on site or um, they have their own um, virtual service and I can happily build stuff in that. Well, thank you. Um, and if you've got any con questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Goodbye.